Excellency, J.M. Futrell, Governor of the great state of Arkansas. Thank you, Mr. Lyons. I sincerely agree with you, Arkansas is a great state. Those of us who live here have known that fact for a long time. And we want the rest of the world to know that this is our 100th year of statehood, and we are proud of it. And right at this point, I want to extend my personal invitation to all of you people out there in the radio audience to visit Arkansas this year. Any year will do, but especially this year. Today is somewhat of a prelude to our centennial celebration, and it seems to me a singularly happy circumstance that we can combine three important features into the activities of this one Sunday. First of all, we're celebrating the change in the name of a little town out here, from Water to Pine Ridge. Offhand, that may not sound like a big reason for celebrating, but when the change is in honor of these boys of ours, Loman and Abner, and when you know, as I do, that every man, woman, and child in the state of Arkansas are Loman Abner fans, well, then maybe you can hold with us that we do have cause for shouting. There's another reason for our being here at this particular time. It was just five years ago that our state sent these young fellows, Chester Locke and Norris Goff, out to try their luck at making a name for themselves in radio. That's at least one point where the rest of the country will join Arkansas. All of us, I believe, are convinced that in these five years, the two of them have turned into a national institution. And we're just about to start as folks in creation today for being able to say, welcome home, you two youngsters. You're expected to Arkansas, and we're all glad to have you with us. The third feature of this occasion is one I mentioned a bit ago. And that's our centennial. Of all the great nations, America is the youngest. And in terms of our national existence, 100 years is quite a long time. In 1836, Arkansas received her statehood as a reward for the years of effort that her early pioneers expended in building a state out of the heart of the wilderness. We are a young state and a young people. Within the lifespan of some of our older citizens, we have grown out of the swaddling clothes of our birth to a full and vigorous manhood. But then, it is, our next, it is our national reputation to get things done in a hurry. We have accomplished much in a short space of time. It is because we wanted things that way and we didn't intend to wait around and let our second hundred years find us with many basic things still undone. In the broad sense, Loma and Abner are quite in keeping with this habit of ours for getting things done quickly. When you stop to listen to them over the air, you immediately think that they are a couple of slow-moving old-timers from our lovely hills out here, a pair of elderly, store-keeping gentlemen who live in quiet little pools of life off the main current of our civilization. True enough, in radio, that is just what they are, but a moment ago I called them a pair of youngsters when I said we are proud to have them back here with us today. In real life, they are a pair of youngsters. Why, it was only a few years ago that these two boys were still in our state university over at Fayetteville. And you might say that they haven't yet gotten over the habit of packing up their school books to go back to school every fall. But even so, here they are, just over 30 and already a couple of real old-timers in this radio business. As you know, and as some of these other people have been telling you, it was about the first of this year that our town of Waters over near Mina decided to change its name to Pine Ridge. When I first heard about it, it struck me as a mighty good idea and one that would show in part that Arkansas truly appreciates the work of these two boys of ours. Thing it over, some of us decided that in Arkansas, at any rate, you couldn't do a thing like that unless you held a celebration. And that's exactly what we are out here for today. A short time ago, the post office department put its stamp of approval on the idea. And as chief executive of Arkansas, it was not only my right, but my duty to the people of this state to declare that April 26th should be statewide Loma and Abner Day. All here to say, in speaking for the great people of the state of Arkansas, I want to express the appreciation of the people to Mr. William, Hop, William Harlick, who has made it possible 
For the radio fans of the nation to hear Lumber, Lumber and Abner almost every evening. Now it gives me a great deal of pleasure to be able to present to, you, to those of you out in the radio audience and to those of uh, our folks here at the state chapter today, Chester Lock and Norris Dahl. Most of you know them better as Lum and Abner. Chester comes up here, Chester come up here and say a few words to the folks. You know what a microphone is for. Thank you, Governor Fusil. No, I wouldn't be too sure about that. We're ready to admit that Lum and Abner know what a microphone looks like, but we're not even supposed to exist. Quite frankly, we have lived those roles of Lum and Abner so much of the time and have tried our level best to think the way Lum and Abner would think that we've just about gotten out of the habit of being our real selves. But just the same, don't you ever believe for one minute that we aren't getting a great big thrill out of things that are happening out here in Arkansas today. It seems to me that we have never felt so much a part of the state as we do right this minute. Why, this centennial year in Arkansas is one of the finest things we've ever heard of. And we are a couple of boys from Mena, and we're part of it. This centennial is for all of us. And I think that all of us should do our level best to make this the biggest year in Arkansas history. You know, when I was a youngster, I always thought of the state as being something uh, kind of big and remote that never entered into my life much except on those occasions when we came up to visit Little Rock and take a look at this Capitol building here. But right now, looking out over this crowd of people out here, I can see only friends and neighbors or folks that we knew in school. These are the state of Arkansas. And it has occurred to me just now that instead of being something big and fearsome, the state is just a bigger than average collection of people that we know and like a whole lot. That being the case, I guess you can't blame me much for feeling as deeply as I do about this whole situation. I think that Lum could find a better expression for the sensation than I. So I'll turn him loose to tell you that. Yes, sir, it's mighty thought of all you folks to come over here and hold this celebrate first. Me and Abner want you all to know that we're deeply touched, and we hope that none of you will be disappointed in us. Well, now, those are my sentiments, too, and I think you'll find them echoed by my longtime friend and fellow teammate in radio, Norris Goff. Well, that's exactly right, Kit. All these folks out here, the governor and the people from our hometown of Mena, the people of Waters who want to change the name of their town because of us, all make me feel as though this couldn't possibly be happening to me. I couldn't begin to tell you how much of a kick I'm getting out of this for the simple reason that I don't know that many words. You know, when we started in radio, it was just about like taking almost any other kind of a job, except, of course, it was pretty much of a thrill to think that we had an audience consisting mainly of the folks back home. And during the five years that we have been on the air, we have always felt that the audience here in Arkansas was right along with us all the time. And it's been a comfort and a lot of encouragement when things haven't gone exactly as we planned. It wasn't so long ago that I was out selling groceries to my old friend Dick Huddleston over there. And while Dick was always a friendly sort of a fellow, why, it never occurred to me then that someday he and the folks in his town would want to change the name of the little place on our account. And when you run into that kind of friendliness as we have, why, you're just about stopped for words. And while you can feel what's happening to you, why, it, it just somehow can't be gotten out in phrases that seem to mean anything. Now, like Chet here said, in an emergency, why, I always have somebody else to fall back on. I think it's probably better to let Abner talk to you about this situation than me. Well, don't bite my cat. I doggy that that wouldn't beat the bugs if I... Golf, you never were no, no handed out law loud talking. You ought to know better than to get out there in the first place. <laughs> now, you take me, for instance. It don't dash me none to get up in front of a gathering this way. I can stand here and look you right smack dab in the eye all day. I ain't afraid of none of you. <laughs> but I, I just want to say uh, thank you, folks, and, and we're proud to be here. <laughs> And 
now, while we're expressing our appreciation for this occasion, we'd like to especially thank the man who first conceived the idea of changing the name of his town to Pine Ridge. A man who, because of his fine qualities, has been the inspiration for one of our most beloved characters over the radio. He's here today, and we'd like for you all to meet him. Our friend, Dick Tuttle. Thank you, boys. I only wish I had the ability to do the things you portray that I do in your program. Thank you, Dick. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the climax of this great event out here in Little Rock. And again, it is my pleasure to present to you the chief executive of this state, Governor Putrell. Well, I'm going to need a little assistance for, for this. Dick Huddleston? Come up here and stand with me. Dick, you are as good a citizen of waters as I can find in behalf of the people of your community. I have a declaration here that I want you to receive. Now, therefore, I, J.M. Putrell, Governor of the Sovereign State of Arkansas, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the people of this state, and by a further virtue of an official order, from the United States Post Office Department do hereby declare and affirm that the town of Waters in Montgomery County of this state shall cease to be known by the name of Waters and from this point forward shall be called in official records of this state, Pine Ridge. <laughs> Mr. Governor, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure and an honor to me to receive this afternoon, on behalf of the people of Pine Ridge, this new charter, changing the name of our little town and post office from Waters to Pine Ridge, which has been made famous by two of the most famous radio stars that are on the air today, our own Lyman Abner. I want to take this opportunity to extend to you an invitation sometime when you're traveling down through our mountain country, over the good road to the highway department, or improving for us to take time to visit Pine Ridge and view some of the scenery that's in our wonderful Washita National Forest and catch a few of those baths that are so plentiful in our beautiful mountain streams. We're just plain common people up at Waters or Pine Ridge, but we have uh, ham meat and chicken gravy to eat and have a heck of a lot of fun. I thank you. <laughs> Well, I notice, ladies and gentlemen, that we only have about one minute left. But I want you to meet another of the characters in Lum and Abner's script, that guardian of the peace and welfare of Pine Ridge, one of the finest old gentlemen in that community, and his real uh, life uh, person is right here standing beside me. He's a fine old gentleman in the script. He's known as Grandpappy Spears, but in real life, he is Uncle Kling Wilhite, 79 years, who's standing right here beside me. Uncle Kling, will you just say hello and how do you feel? Hello. I'm as dead as a cat bird. Oh, <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to the conclusion of this broadcast celebrating Lum and Abner Day in Arkansas. I only wish that I could adequately describe the picture and the scenes that have been presented here during the past 24 hours, honoring the two native sons who have come back to be honored in a great big way. Crowds meeting the train all the way across the state of Arkansas as we came in yesterday, and all the way through a great big feeling of wonderful friendship and fine fellowship. And so we bring this broadcast to its conclusion. Charles Lyon speaking from the steps of the Capitol Building in Little Rock, Arkansas. The music, incidentally, was furnished by the fine 70 piece band of the Little Rock High School under the direction of J. Bruce Jones. Goodbye, everybody. This program has come to you through the National Broadcasting Company. Thank <laughs> you.